this is way better. So you've made all this in here. Oh, it's just amazing. So that spiral is already taking place. Wow, there. that's awesome. Holy crap, and you only take a little, little bit of time. Yeah. How long have you been doing this? I've been making pops full time for 20 years, but my mom and dad started Dover Pottery whenever I was nine years old. Now, oh my I get gosh. bored with the plane spiral so lately. Just been adding a little nice texture time. to it there that just adds zigzags basically in that spiral. So hopefully when they're gonna you know, pull the walls, you'll be able to see those zigzags. Oh my gosh, that's just amazing. That just opens up the ball, makes the floor. Grab a little pinch and just <laughs> ride it all the way up. Oh my gosh, that's, that's amazing. Awesome. Thank you for doing this. Oh no problem, no problem. It only yeah. takes what like a few minutes and he acts like it's so simple. Well it is. Of course I've like I said, I've been making pop for twenty years, so, and that's my been my job the whole time. So, and like, and also my like, I was nine years old when my parents started Dover Pottery in nineteen eighty three, and I you know, just, just can't take that for granted. You know, that, that, that was my summer job all the time. Just when we were kids, we sculpted and played around. So it's just always been there. That is amazing. I know. Kind of see those colors hiding in there. I'll scrape that off in just a second. You'll really be able to see it. I'm so glad we, you, you, you asked. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> this is just amazing. You don't see this every day. Let's put it that way. We, we never seen it, at least. <laughs> he doesn't like it's nothing. Yeah, I know. It makes it look like it's so easy. Oh, just do this. <laughs> I can make this in no time. Yeah, it's just all repetitive motion. Practice, practice, practice. Yeah. To be able to get your hand in there and touch for certain places. Muscle memory is kind of a funny thing too. I preach it all the time. Music as well. I play guitar and drums and you know yeah, there's songs. Plays guitar and, too yeah. and drums and yeah. That's impressive. Just yeah. things you don't even have to think about anymore. That's when you can turn on autopilot. That's when you're when you're in a good place. See, there's still a little bit of smear involved in there, but I, after it dries a little bit, I can put it back on the wheel and trim it down and just really make those those contrasts more distinct. So you, when you um are done, do you just keep it on there? Because obviously, if you pick it up, it's going to be over with. Oh, I totally pick it up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's really soft, never mind you, but but I still, you know, it's it's still with a gentle enough touch, you can still move the stuff around. And that big bowl there, I just picked that up off the wheel just a little while ago. Oh. I'll show you as soon as I get this done now. And then you, then you put it, after it dries, what do you do after that? Well, it has to be completely bone dry. If there's any moisture at all, it'll blow up in the kiln. So you let it dry completely, and then you have the bisque firing, which right. just changes the, the chemical makeup of the clay. Leaves it still porous enough to where if you dunk it in the glaze or apply whatever glaze to it, then it'll just soak right in. And then you, apply, then you put it in the, uh, the glaze firing, and that is obviously a much hotter fire. And that actually melts the clay and the glaze to each other. This, of course, this is an ultra simple thing. It's the clay doing the talking, but other folks, you know, they have their glaze be the focus. And like I was talking about with that crystalline out there, that's an extremely finicky glaze. It's a flowing glaze at peak temperature. So you have to have a catch basin to catch all this runoff. Temperature's just right, ingredients just right, and it's for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> this is that was amazing. Just when you sculpted it up like that, it was like, holy crap! What did he just do? <laughs> yeah, I know. He was like, what is that? Look at that. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? And it's got the same thing going inside as well. I mean, it's just, it's just oh spiral all the way through, so cool. in and out, all over. That's impressive. So you just cut it off with a wire tool. Just very gently lift it up. It's very good. Oh my gosh. Do another one. Yeah, can we watch it again? <laughs> <laughs> this was so, this is amazing. Here we go again. I'm going to this big vase thing. 
things. It looks like a giant cup there. I'll do this one without the uh, without the jagged marks. You can see the spiral better though. Really tight spiral there now. He's been here for 20 years. I couldn't imagine him. It is funny. Yeah, some folks will think, oh, that just looks easy as pie. I can do that. No, it is not that easy. <laughs> well, I know it isn't. It's not easy. I've it's got some very friends, hard. Some you know, big man dudes, about 250 pounds. Like, oh, I can handle that. I can do that. It's just a little of clay. Maybe a little one pound ball of clay. But <laughs> can't handle it. You know, just move it around. And <laughs> then, on the other side of that, there's this little girl, this Japanese lady, Hitomi Shidaka Shibata, looks like a real star. And she's. Probably not 95 pounds. And she'll be 25 pound pots. Just take that lump of clay and just center it like it's you know, just a new rag Wow, that's amazing. You can do it too. That's a good, good hobby. It's expensive mm -hmm. one, though. Mm -hmm. If you want to make money off of it, then you can probably sell it for twice as much as what you can see. The weird thing about is where all your money is going to be spent. These wheels are not cheap. The right? count is not cheap. But the actual ingredients is dirt. <laughs> That's right. Pick that up. You, you literally can. I mean, out here, I, I've gone out in my backyard and dug up the clay. You know, with a little bit of processing, you can turn it immediately. So, I may not be the best turning clay, but you can use it. Plus, you color So, did you get all this clay from? Where did you get all this clay from? Uh, there's one clay body that I use that is a local clay body. Uh, the other ones, there's no white clay here in Seagrove, but obviously it's all just real mud. Hey. Hey. I don't like it with one. I'll do that. So I'll just let those stiffen and then dry. And and the ones that I haven't done this kind of finish to, I'll actually take my little cutting device. I'll do a quick example here just to give you an idea. This is not the best time to do this, mind you. Let me cut into it. You kind of see that really good oh. difference that happens there. If it's stiffer, you can get a much better cut, but that's just a, a good example anyway. Of course, it warps the whole piece. <laughs> yeah. A lot easier once it's dry. Oh, no.